Hi everybody, it's Thomas here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are looking at the brand new version of Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, that is, 12.3. So 12.3 sounds like a bit of a point update, but there's actually a pretty big new feature in this and we are gonna to get to that in a second. There's actually a whole bunch of updates in this release and I'm just going to cover some of the big ones. Also, I will have chapter points in the description below too, so you can skip ahead to the bit that you want. So to start off, let's talk about mask updates. In this release, they have added curves to the masking tool options. If we have a mask on an image and I have one already set up here. So if I go over to my masks and you can see we have a mask for the sky. And if you scroll down, you can see we now have curves on masks. So we kind of knew this was coming because it, they had already added it to Camera Raw, um, but now it is in Lightroom as well. So I can adjust the sky using curves. And obviously this will work on any mask. So uh, one thing to note, um, if you see the histogram down here, this histogram only shows what is in the mask. So in this case, you're only seeing the histogram for the selected sky. This is something I know people have been looking for for a long time and now it, you can finally do it. So yeah, curves are now available on masks. So uh, the other thing that they've added to masking is they have added some new features to the people masking. So if I go over to this rather embarrassing photo of yours truly, <laughs> you can now automatically create masks for both facial hair and clothes. So if I go to people down here, you can see person and it's picked up me. Um, you can now select facial hair like so um, or clothes. So if I, for example, I create a mask for facial hair for my beard, I can adjust my beard. If only it was so easy in real life. See if I can get rid of the gray. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, 20 years younger. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually scary. So let's just get rid of that. Okay, um, and then the other thing is for clothes. So I can create a mask for clothes and I can do stuff like adjust the color so on, maybe make it a black t-shirt. And then I can use the new curves to also adjust it. Okay, so that is masking. So the second thing actually sounds like a minor feature, but it's one of those little changes that I think people might get a bit confused by at first. So let me just pop over to another image here. Okay, so if you look at the adjustments panel and you scroll down and you may have noticed what where switches here are now little eyeballs. So if I, let's say, make some edits on the curves tool, like so. Previously, if I wanted to turn this off, I would have a little switch here um, and I would turn it off uh, if I wanted to see what it looked like without the curve. Um, but now, as you can see, we have eyeball, little eyeball icon. And if I press and hold on that, it now gives me a before view for that panel, or basically it temporarily disables that panel. So, and then when I release the mouse button, um, it goes back to showing it on. So it's kind of like a shortcut for temporarily disabling um, that particular panel. Again, I can do it here, like so. And you'll also notice that some are grayed out. Um, if they are grayed out, that means there is no adjustments on that particular panel. So uh, the little eyeball icon also acts like a, an edit indicator. Now, you may be saying to yourself, but what if I want to permanently turn off uh, an adjustment panel? Uh, and what if I want my switches back? Well, you just hold down the Alt key on a PC or Option on Windows and you get your switches back while you have the Alt key held down. And you can just say toggle this off. And when you release this, it goes back to the eyeball icon, but you can see it's got a little line through it to show that um, that edit has been disabled. So it might take a bit of getting used to it. Um, I've been using this for a little while now, and personally, I think it's actually um, a much better way of working because 90% of the time when you use those switches, it was to temporarily disable something. So again, to hold down the option key to get back to your switch and turn it, toggle it back on again. Okay, so on to the third big thing, and uh, this is the big one. I've saved the best for last. And let me pop over to another image here to demonstrate this. Okay, so 
In Lightroom, um, <laughs> the noise reduction technology is kind of getting a bit old and um, a lot of people have complained that it's better in other applications and so on and so on. Um, so in this version, in 12.3, they have added a brand new AI-based denoising um, solution. So this works kind of like um, super resolution in that it uses the enhance panel. Rather than go on and on about it, let me just give you a demonstration. Um, so I have this photo here that I took in Washington DC. And if I zoom in here, I don't know how well this is gonna come up in video, but um, hopefully you'll be able to see the noise. It's a pretty noisy image. Um, up here in the sky, it's not too bad. Um, but if we go down here, as we get more into the hotel, you can see it's very noisy. So this. This was shot on a Sony A6000 at ISO 800, and the A6000 is not exactly a low light king. And I've also pushed this as well, so as you can see, we're really getting into the noise here in the shadow areas. So, if I want to use the new denoising tool, what do I do? Well, there's two ways to do it. The first is I can go to the menu and go to Photo Enhance which will bring it up. Or also, if I go down to the noise reduction section in the adjustments panel, I can just hit denoise. Okay, and this will load the enhance um, window. So basically, it's, it's the same thing that was raw details and super resolution. However, um, just one limitation on this is that you can't use it in conjunction with super resolution yet. Um, you can like, so for example, you see super resolution is grayed out here. Um, and also, it only works, as they put it, on bare and Xtrans files. So it doesn't work on JPEGs or Apple's ProRAW or anything like that. Um, they do plan to add those um, formats in a future release, but for the moment, um, it doesn't. So anyway, once you bring it up, you get our enhanced preview here. And if you want this, you can see that's a lot cleaner. Um, so I'm just going to hit enhance. So one thing about this is as well, it's quite slow. Um, on my M1 Mac, it takes about two minutes to do an image um, and I will cut to the finished results now. Okay, so here we have the finished result. And as you can see, it is substantially cleaner. Now, um, <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to show up on video, but it's like someone took a, a squeegee, you know, one of those things they use to clean windows and just wiped the noise off the image. <laughs> so uh, let me just bring up a side by side here. And if I just get rid of the interface. So, <laughs> like I said, the results are pretty impressive. And um, when I first ran this, I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, the noise is, much, is almost gone. Um, occasionally you might see some weird details if there was like a lot of noise. Um, but yeah, that is pretty clean. Um, and that was only at 50%. You can actually toggle it all the way up to 100%, but it gets a bit weird. Um, in fact, let me show you an example of that. Um, so, okay, so here's an image from New York, and this is an old uh, Nikon D90 I took this with, so it was quite noisy. So if I zoom in here, you can see it's very noisy. So I tried this on 100% to see uh, what it would look like, and this is it on 100%. I don't know how well this, again, I don't know how well any of these are showing up on video. Um, but it's like, <laughs> the noise is gone. It's totally gone. Um, it looks a bit weird because it's a bit too clean. Um, and in some cases, um, like it, it's, it has to guess uh, basically where if it was really noisy. So you can see, kind of see it around here. Um, but still, it's really impressive. Um, I recommend you use it at about 50%. So here's the same images at a 50%. So you can see there's a little bit of noise in it, but that actually, in my opinion, makes it look a bit more natural. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's not much more I can say. If you have Lightroom, um, download it and try it. And I think you will be impressed. Um, if you may be wondering how does this compare to say uh, DxO Pure Raw, um, and there's a couple of differences. For a start, um, DxO is a lot faster, um, but in my opinion, DxO it isn't as clean. Um, the results uh, aren't quite as natural looking, and it has a tendency to do, um, it kind of sharpens images as well, because it's running it through its, uh, it's basically its um, processing engine. 
let me just very quickly run this to pure raw and i will i'll actually just edit in the pure raw version so okay so here we have the pure raw version and you, as you can see there's a bit more detail in this the results are sharper but in my opinion it's not as clean um here we have the lightroom on on the right and the pure raw on the left as you can see the pure raw is is definitely a lot sharper but the lightroom one looks a lot less processed and um a lot more natural looking and you can of course ramp up the sharpening in the lightroom one as well there's no sharpening um there's no additional sharpening done whereas the, uh, the dxl one is using its own sharpening module um so while the results from Lightroom are a lot cleaner and more natural looking, you may actually get sharper results from um, DxO. So uh, what I will do is in a future video, I will do a full comparison between this and DxO Pure Raw. But in my opinion, the big advantage of Pure Raw is that it's faster. And the big advantage of this new feature in Lightroom is, apart from the fact that it's free, <laughs> it's much cleaner and much more natural looking. So it's one of those things that you uh, really need to try it on your own images. And I think you will be impressed. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna take on older machines. On my M1, as I said, it takes about two minutes, um, depending on the image. It seems to work better with higher resolution images than lower resolution images. But overall, um, in my opinion, the results are pretty amazing. So there you have it. That is the main key features of Lightroom 12.3. There are a few other minor new features. Uh, for example, you can now select, and uh, let me just go in here. You can now select the version of Photoshop. Um, if you have multiple versions of Photoshop installed, um, you also have the ability, if you select multiple images, you can now go uh, open as smart object layers in Photoshop and this will open your images um, in one document in Photoshop and each image will be its own smart object layer and um, previously you just had open as layers in Photoshop and it would um, open your images as layers but they wouldn't be smart objects so as I said that is the main new features um, there's a, a few other little things and, and the usual um, new camera support and new lens support um, if you check in the description below, I will have a link to my blog post where I have more details on this release. And um, the mobile and desktop versions have um, some of these new features as well. Um, okay, thank you for watching. Um, I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.